So we've all heard that buying gear isn't magically gonna just make you a better filmmaker, but sometimes having the right gear can be really helpful in making your job just a little bit easier. So in this video, I wanna talk about a few pieces of underrated gear that I think every solo filmmaker should invest in. This video is not gonna be sponsored by any of the brands that I'm gonna mention. These are all just my own thoughts and opinions. And these are things that I've been using over the past few years and they've made my workflow just a little bit smoother. And I wanna quickly mention, we're not gonna be talking about the essential stuff like a camera and lenses, or a tripod because I'm just going to assume that you already have that stuff covered. So the first thing we're going to talk about is having an external monitor. This is going to be way better than having to look at the tiny screen on the back of your camera all the time. First of all, because it's just a physically bigger screen. So you're looking at a bigger image and it's going to be way easier to tell if your shot is in focus and if it's exposed correctly. On top of that, most external monitors, even the cheaper ones nowadays, come packed with a bunch of different video assist features that most cameras aren't gonna have available built in. And as an added bonus, external monitors are usually way brighter than the screens on the backs of cameras. So if you do a lot of filming outdoors, it's gonna be way easier for you to see what you're actually doing. So I've been using a Field World LUT 6 monitor for around half a year now, and I've been pretty happy with it. It's built decently well. It has a ton of assist features. It gets really bright. It's super easy to power with one of those bigger Sony NPS style batteries, as long as you don't blast it at full brightness the entire time. So even though this video isn't sponsored, if you're looking for a good deal on a monitor, I can definitely recommend that one. When it comes to picking a monitor size, it's a pretty subjective thing. And I personally think five and a half or six inches is the sweet spot for a monitor screen, but some people might think that a bigger screen works better for them. This is just my own point of view, but obviously the best thing you can do is if there's a camera store nearby, you can go there in person, ask for them to give you a few different options and just like actually hold them in front of yourself and uh, compare them, figure out which one works better for you and get that one. So regardless of what you go for, it's absolutely always gonna be better than the screen on the back of your camera. And when you buy it, it's gonna be one of those things that sticks with you as you upgrade your cameras down the line. So as long as you take care of it, it's gonna be something that you can use for a very long time and it's a very good investment to make. So the second thing we're gonna talk about is lens filters and specifically a variable ND filter. If you don't know what an ND filter does, uh, maybe you should pause this video and go watch a video about that because that's a little bit more beginner stuff and I'm not gonna spend the time I'm explaining it but the reason why I'm recommending a variable ND instead of like a set of fixed ND filters is because as a solo filmmaker you don't want to have to be swapping between different strength ND filters while you're on a shoot because it's one more thing that you have to have on your mind and it's gonna take a little bit of extra time whereas with a variable ND you can just turn it to one side or the other and decide how much light is coming into your lens and if you want to save a little bit of money instead of buying a bunch of variable NDs for each of the lenses that you own you can just get one that has a filter thread size bigger than your biggest lens and then what you do is you get a set of step up adapter rings so that you can adapt that single filter across all of the lenses that you own so you can get good budget friendly variable NDs from companies like KNF Concept and Earth which are both brands that I've used before and I'm pretty happy with. I haven't really seen any negative effects on my image from using their filters, but if you have more money and you wanna spend it on something that's considered a little bit more premium, you can go for something from Polar Pro, Freewell, or Nisi, but I personally haven't had the opportunity to test any of those, so I can't really compare them to any of the more inexpensive options. The next thing we're talking about is lighting, and you're probably wondering why I'm talking about lighting in a video that was supposed to be about underrated gear, but a lot of people underestimate exactly how important lighting can be, or they might be intimidated by the fact that lighting is just one of those things that once you start buying it, it can get really expensive really quickly, so they don't want to do it, and they just think that you can get away with using natural light or whatever lights are built into the location that you're shooting at and sometimes you can get away with it but a lot of the time it's not going to be the best option so when you're just getting started it's really important to have at least one reliable light with some diffusion and it can make a world of a difference in terms of how good of an image you can get so a few things that you might want to look out for when you're buying light is whether or not you can control the intensity of the light. There are some pretty budget friendly lights out there that essentially just have an on and off switch and those are not very useful because you can't really control how much light you're getting. A few other optional things that might be useful to you are whether or not you can control the light temperature. So essentially how cool or how warm the light is. It's probably going to cost you a little bit more money, but in the long run, it's going to be a good investment because it just 
makes it a lot more versatile. And the last thing you might find useful is a light that you can connect to some sort of app or a remote. As a solo filmmaker, when you're working on a project alone and you're having to think about literally everything that goes into the project, you don't wanna have to constantly be running back and forth, changing the light intensity with a knob on the back and having to check whether or not your exposure is right and then running back and doing it all over again. If you have a little bit more budget left, I would also recommend that you try and get one of those five in one reflectors because it can be really useful when you only have a small lighting kit and it can really save you on some lower budget productions. They come in a bunch of different sizes and generally speaking they're usually very inexpensive so it's definitely also a good investment to make along with your light. So next up we're talking about having a small bag for on location quick access and we're not talking about your standard big camera backpack but more along the lines of just like a small crossbody or a sling bag. Essentially it's just going to be a way for you to keep all of the things that you need quick access to organized instead of having to stuff all of your pockets with gear. And then when you need something, you have to go and remember which pocket has what. I personally use the small crossbody bag that's not even made for cameras, but it's just really useful for keeping my battery case, my filter cases, a cleaning cloth or whatever else I might need. And that way, whenever I get to a shoot, I can leave my big backpack with the majority of my gear, either in my car or in a corner somewhere where it's out of the way. And I can just bring the stuff that I need quick access to with me. And the last piece of gear that we're gonna talk about is having a small multi-tool. And some of you are probably gonna think that this is really stupid and they're gonna think it's a weird thing to include in one of these videos, but it can definitely be a lifesaver. It's come in handy so many times when I had to tighten like a tripod plate or a tripod leg or one of the top or side handles on my camera and it gets rid of having to have a bunch of separate tools just scattered around different pockets of your backpack just rattling around and then when you need one you have to go and dig through all of your gear just to find the right one and you also won't have those moments where you have to like tighten a tripod plate and you're looking for a coin but all you have is paper money or like a debit card and you're obviously not gonna sit there and try to tighten a tripod plate with the corner of a debit card and snap it in half so it's up to you and your budget in terms of how fancy you want to go with your multi-tool you can go with something like mine that's like really inexpensive it has a few hex wrenches a phillips and a flathead screwdriver or you can get one of those bigger ones that has like pliers, scissors, a flashlight, or a bottle opener if you need a bottle opener. But regardless of what you get, you always want to have one of these tools because it can save you from so many headaches that you didn't even know were possible. So that's all I have for you in this one. I hope my advice was helpful in giving you some ideas about what you should look out for if you go and try to buy any of these pieces of gear. But before we wrap things up, I just wanna quickly mention, none of these things are gonna instantly make you a better filmmaker if you buy them. They're just things that might make things go a little bit smoother when you're working on a project. That being said, if you can't afford any of this stuff right now, please don't worry and don't feel pressured to go and spend money that you can't really afford to spend on any of these things. You can absolutely still create great work without them. And then down the line, once you've been able to save a little bit of money, you can kind of look at your workflow and consider whether or not you think any of these pieces of gear might make your life a little bit easier. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you decide to subscribe and stick around and I'll see you in the next one.